Hello, I'm Clyde Butcher. I've been a fine art photographer for 48 years. And I've been working in the chemistry and getting my hands all gooey and everything, but developing, I think, pretty nice photographs. But then about 10 years ago, I decided that I think the digital world, I need to, need to learn this world. So I tried playing with Photoshop and I was really not successful and I was really getting frustrated because I wanted to use the same basic techniques I use here in a silver dark room. There's basically only three or four things you do here. What you do is keep light back from a picture, which is dodging, which is why I use this. The other one is a burning. I burn uh, through this. I actually put more light on the paper and create a darker image. And then also I take, and one of the main things I do, is really exciting, people like my skies, is I take and I gradually burn the sky from dark to light, from the horizon, and that gives you the feeling of a roundness to it. The only other thing, two things that are involved is the right exposure and the right contrast. That may sound simple, but that can take a week to do a print. In the digital darkroom, I think I can do it a little quicker. And I think you're going to enjoy these simple techniques because all I'm trying to teach you is try to make a good looking photograph. I'm not trying to teach you how to put elephant heads on bodies and that sort of thing. It's just making a good photograph. So enjoy this DVD and I hope this will help your photography become a much better printer in the future. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our visit to the Venice Darkroom where I really kind of tried to explain what I've been doing for the last 48 years. I'm using my hands for burning and dodging, how I'm using a little stick with cardboard on it, how I'm using a board with a hole to burn. So I've, I've spent that much time trying to figure out how to do this. Now, when I started the computer world, I, I was kind of lost. And so I said to myself, now I have to figure out a way to do the computer world the same as I did in my darkroom. Basically, it's an analog system. So I have many, many, many tryings and blocking up the computer. I've basically discovered how to, I think, how to do that. So first thing I'm going to do is open up an image, uh, click on it, and that uh, will open this image up in Photoshop. Now, what I want to show you, first thing is the tools that I use. The, I'm going to Windows. There's a little thing up here called Windows. And that has all these different things you can set up on your desktop over here. Uh, I use History. And then I use uh, Layers. And I use Options. And I use Tools. That's only the four things I use. When you click those on, this little box comes up over here, which has these two uh, tools in it. Now, I can separate them to show you they're two different boxes. But just for convenience on my screen so it doesn't block everything up, I put them together. Just so they're all together there. Okay? So, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how the tools function with the option bar. Now first what I'm going to do is a cloning tool. I hit the cloning tool and go over here and hit the highlight one. The bottom one I have don't know what it does so I don't use it. Uh, and when I do that a whole new option bar comes up over here. Now if I hit say the racer which is down below here a different option bar comes up. So this option bar here coordinates with this tool here so that they they work together. Now I'm going to go back to the cloning tool over here. And one of the things that's kind of nice when you start a picture is to spot it and get rid of all the imperfections before you start photoshopping it. So you don't have to redo it every time you want to open the image up. Now, uh, so, so that I'm going, to, I'm going to find some spots to spot, which I'm going to enlarge the picture. And that's the next thing I'm going to show you on the keyboard is how to enlarge the screen and most people like 66% to 100% of the size of the image. So you hit control or command plus 
And as you can see in the lower left-hand corner, that's 25%, 33%, 50%, and 60%. So let's see if we can find some spots here. Oh, there's a little spot right there. Now, you see how I that picture? I, what I did is I put my space bar here. See that hand show up there? And I can move this thing around and find areas. Oh, there's a spot right there. Look at that spot there. The cloning tool uh, has a magic thing. It's called softness and hardness. And this is called a brush. Now this brush, I'm going to go up here and click on it, is used in many different tools. The eraser, the history brush, uh, dodging, all kinds of tools. The same brush is used. On the left, it's the softest. and On the right, it's the hardest. So I'm going to use the hard one to show you how you shouldn't use it, the hardness. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is take and make my little circle bigger so you can see it. Now how you do that, this is what this little circle here is what you're going to clone, the size you're going to clone. So if you hit the parentheses on the left, it goes smaller. If you hit parentheses. On the right, it goes bigger. Now, I, obviously that's too big for that spot. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is to show you by taking a weird color. What you, I'm going to pick this area here and put it over here to show you what happens to the brush. To do that, I hit the Option key. You can see where that defines it there. And then I hit the mouse and that registers it. So that spot is going to go, when I, when I pick it over here, when I hit mouse is going to define that that spot and see how perfectly round it is it doesn't blend very well now the next control keys on the keyboard is apple i call it apple but it's now called command z or control z and that takes away the last step you did so i'm going to go back up here to my brush and i'm going to take the brush to the left all the way and that makes this maximum smoothness so I'm going to put this over here where the moss is I'm going to hit the option then mouse that defines it and hit it over here now you see how that now it's, it's blending it's nice and soft so you can't see the edge it kind of integrates nicely so I'm going to do C command Z control Z and it gets rid of it now these spot see this little spot right there this is pretty big to make that little spot. So I'm going to hit the left key. That's going to make it smaller. I hit, now I'm going to take an area of the same color and hit the option, mouse, and go over it. And it's gone. Look at that. See, there's one. There was gone. There it's gone. There's one up there. Gone, gone. Now, if I do this, it's probably going to hit that dark area. So I want to go over here pick up the lighter area okay so now <clears throat> I say I've got this spotted how do you save it well there's a there's a keyboard control or command s that saves what you've done I'm going to go show you one of the other main tools we're going to be using on this next step now I'm going to get this picture back to full size on the screen so how do you do that well there's a neat keyboard it's command zero and that gets you back to full size on your screen. Now the next major tool I'm going to use is called the histogram. Now there's an easy way of getting the histogram up and that is command L. And there it pops right up. Now what this does if I pull this slider on the right, it gives you more highlights. See, that now the water's all blown out. And then I pull the middle one, and that gives you midtones. And I pull the left one, and that gives you, gives you the, the shadows. Now, basically, it's going to give you the tools that I'm going to use this next phase. I'm going to try to make this, these pictures lighter. I'm going to start with a different image because I'm tired of looking at this one right now. So we're going to click this one off. And I'm going to go up to my screen folder, which I have this folder full of pictures I want to make lighter. 
This is the first one I'm going to do. This, is, this was done out in the Escalante area. Now, what? how did I say to make this full screen? Ah, Command-0. That gives you full screen. Okay? Now, to make this lighter, what I'm going to do is create another image in the layer box. And to do that, I hit Command-J. Now, that pops up a image over here it's in the uh, layer box okay now and that layer is highlighted so whatever I do it's going to affect that layer now this there's a little box up here that says normal you click on that and I'm gonna go down to screen now when I hit screen that lightens the picture up that's going to make my highlights brighter everything brighter but I don't want my midtones and shadows brighter so how do I solve that well I go get my histogram, and that's Command L. And I'm going to add some midtones, okay, and a little bit of black, maybe a little bit more, okay. Now, say so I said okay. Now, that's pretty neat. Now I'm going to click off this one so you can see where we came from. We went from there to here. Now this corner right here, I would like to see darker because it's, it's, I want to have more depth in the picture. So how am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do, I lightened it. So what I'm going to do is go over and get my eraser. And that gives me a new tool uh, option bar up here. But what I'm going to do is, see it's 100%. I'm going to go down to, say, 10%. So every time I hit something, it's going to take 10% of the image that I can't put on there. It's going to, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my thing a little bigger so it works quicker. So if you take this, what I'm doing here is I'm erasing part of the image I did to make it lighter, just to make it back where it was. You can see how it's starting to get light. I do it in small steps. So I can visually keep watching it, and and you don't do it all at once. This way I can control getting darker, and it's going to be giving you more of a rounded look. Okay. Okay, now that's looking a lot better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress these, put both these layers together, which will give me a, a one one image. How you do that, you can hit Command Shift E. See all they went to one box now? Now I've got one box. Now, I want to bring some more contrast into this. I think it's looking pretty good, but I think it could look better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another copy of the full image over here. And then when, instead of hitting screen, I'm going to hit multiply. Now that's going to make it darker. And obviously that's way too dark, right? Now I'm going to work on this top image so that I can... I'm going to create some contrast in this image. Now how I'm going to do that... Uh, I'm going to go over here to... Up here on the very top where it says Photoshop image. I'm going to come down to Adjustments and go over to this whole big bunch of stuff over here. And I'm going to hit desaturate. That makes it black and white. Now, obviously, if you put those two together, it's not going to work very good. It's going to cancel each other out. But what I'm going to do is make this a high contrast scene. So it gives me the snap in the picture. Now, how I do that is I open up histogram, Command L. Okay? What I'm going to do is pull the highlights over. And you see it's getting more and more contrasty, more and more contrasty, more and more. You go too far, obviously you lose the image. So you want to get to the point where you see some neat things happening um, in here. It kind of now we got some, got some. These lines are starting to uh, exaggerate. Now it seems to work better if I make this more translucent. Because if you throw this on the color, it gets really too powerful. And if you go on the bottom here, and you pull on the left line over, 
it makes the blacks more translucent. Can you see what's happening there? Okay. So, say okay. Now I'm going to click, go back to my layer box and click on my lower image. Now I'm going to click off the top so you can see what happens. See how that punches? Now, that's looking pretty good to me, except this is maybe a little dark. So what I'm going to do is take my eraser and take away some of that black. I'm going to take a little of the black here, a little of that black. It's, my eraser is at 10%, so I'm just taking a little off. If you can see, I'm basically erasing a little bit here, erasing a little bit here, erasing a little bit here. So that it gives me more detail back in those growies. Now, I would like to see some more contrast here. But when I did the other one, it, that disappeared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the bottom image. Now, this is the background image. Again, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing here as I did on the other one. I'm going to make a duplicate, and I'm going to multiply it, and I'm going to kill this one, kill that one, and that's the image we started with. Go over here to your image, adjustments, down to desaturate, okay, black and white again. Now I'm going to open my histogram. Command L, remember that? Okay. Now, but this time I'm going to watch this area here when I pull this wide over. And I'm going to wait, I'm going to get to the point where I still have some nice lines in here. See, now I've got some lines in here, but I've got too much over here. So if I use that, this is going to really wipe out my other image, which I didn't like. So, but I'm going to say okay. Then I'm going to get my eraser, but I'm going to get my eraser back up to 100%. And I'm going to hit my parentheses, the bigger one here, and I'm going to erase this part. Because I don't want that part. This is why you use these layers, so I can burn and dodge with these layers, and doesn't affect the overall quality of the image. And you don't have to be too precise because it's, it's really it's a high it's a high contrast, so you don't have to be too careful here. Okay, so I made some lines here. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm going to open up this here. I'm going to open this back up. Now I'm going to take what I just did, and I'm going to click it off. You see what happened there? It just gave dimensions to those rocks. It just punched them out. So it's kind of a fun thing to do when, you, when you've done this. I'm going to hit um, Command-Shift-E, and that combines them all. Now I'm going to open up the history, and I'm going to, just for the fun of it so you can see, if we can find enough history here, this is where we opened, and... This is where we stopped. You can see what happened. I mean, it just came to a so-so picture to a very dramatic picture. It's just a little subtleties here and there really makes a difference. Now, we've got a nice finished picture uh, that's ready to print. I'm not going to save it because I might do this again. So we hit this, and I'm going to hit Don't Save, so that goes back to my original. So that basically gives you an idea of what you can do burning, uh, making a picture lighter and then making it darker, if that makes any sense. So I use the layers as a burning and dodging tool. Now, shall we do another one? Let's do another one. Um, this is a picture my wife took up in uh, Acadia. Now, great sky, kind of a great foreground if you can see it. So, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is make it lighter. I'm going to hit Apple J. That gives me another image over here in layers. And I'm going to hit screen. Oh, so that's looking better. But, look at my sky. My sky disappeared. So, what am I going to do? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to 
take that layer that I made and I'm going to get rid of that uh, sky, I mean, that, the sky part of it. So by erasing that part, uh, when you get down to the horizon, you got to be a little more careful. It looks a little bit of talent to zip along. And it's nice if you can do it into a little dark area so it blends really nicely. Now to check and make sure I erased everything, I turned the bottom one off. And there's little parts here and there that I missed. So I go back here. So that's basically what I did is I got rid of the sky and this added this to lighten the image. Now, where do you go from here? Well, I can take and use my histogram because now we're, that we're working on this image here. I'm going to take my histogram, open that up, Command L, remember that? Command L. Uh, let's add some highlights to it. Ooh, looks kind of nice. Now, <clears throat> this is kind of a, I'm not sure I should throw this in now, but we'll throw it in. It's a good time to throw it in. Say you want to change the color of just, uh, you're talking about just this bottom part. The sky, say it's the same. It's okay. Um, hit Control, Command, B. As a boy, this is going to be fun. And say I want to hit <coughs> the highlights here. I want it. I want. I want some yellow in it. So I'm going to click on the highlights here, and I'm going to put some yellow in there. Get some warmth to it. Now say the shadows. Hey, let's put some blue in the shadows. Okay. Let's say we maybe put some more yellows in the highlights. You know, it's 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 your own personal. You know translation now of what you want to do there so basically say okay this is where we opened this is where we're at how long did that take a couple of minutes now I want to do is save this because there's another step later on that we can use to the same image but I don't, I don't want to tell you about it right now so I'm going to hit the, uh, I'm going to put the, make the layers together, and that's <clears throat> Control Shift E, and that puts all the layers together. So the layers now are one. I'm going to go up here to File. I'm going to save as, and I'm going to put after this. I'm going to put my. I'm going to put CB for. So that changes the title, so the original image doesn't disappear. This image then will be saved as this Hit save and save okay so now this should be in this little box right there so what i'm going to do is take it out of the box and put it on the desktop because we're going to use it later on i'm going to keep it there okay i'm going to do one more and then we'll go to another subject we'll do a flower which is kind of fun uh, this is a flower my wife took now she likes to underexpose it because you don't blow out the highlights. She does all this. Most of these images were taken with digital camera. So you have a problem blowing highlights out. In film, it's usually always still there. It's dark. So I'm going to make, what are you going to do? Command J. Gives me another layer over here. I'm going to hit screen. Oh, makes it lighter. But it's kind of all mushy now. So what I'm going to do is hit Command L, or Control L, and I'm going to put some mid-tones in it, and I'm going to put a little, a little bit of black in it, okay? So, okay, so now that's looking pretty good, looking a lot better. This is where we were to start with, this is where we are now. Now let's use that same, now I'm going to take and put it together, Control Shift E. That puts it together in one layer. I'm going to use that same trick we did on the first one of, of going to the desaturation in black and white. So I'm going to make another copy. Control, Command, J. Multiply. Click off the bottom one. So this, I click it off so I can see what I'm doing. 
Uh, it's not, otherwise you really can't see what you're doing. Now I'm going to go over to Image, down to Adjust, over to Desaturate. Now we've got black and white image again. So how, what do you do? Next step, Control L, Histogram. Bring over your highlights, so we're making a really nice and contrasty image. We don't want too much, we just want a little bit. And maybe I pull a little bit, make it a little more translucent. Okay. Now, click that on, and click the bottom one on. Now, is that too much? Could be too much. So I can go up here in opacity, and I can pull it back a little bit. Now, this black layer, this is awfully black in the center here. I mean, it's really kind of killed the center of interest to the picture. So what I'm going to do is get my eraser, and I'm going to erase that portion of it. Okay. Now, so you get the, now you got a glow in the center of the picture. Uh, we can go into our history, and so you can see what we did. That's what it was, and that's what that erase in the black. Look how that glowed in the center. just pops right out. Got a little bug. See the little buggy bug there? That's kind of neat. So let's go back to the opening. That's where we started. How long did that take? Uh, two or three minutes? Very simple. Um, should I save it? Well, let's go ahead and save it. I'm going to put... Uh, Oh, so I, my layers, i ah, got to put my layers together. Control, Shift, E. Puts all those together. Come on, clock, keep going. There you go. Okay, I'm going to save as... CB. And instead of putting it back into the folder, I'm just going to hit this and put it right on the desktop. And so you go down here... Where my desktop? Yes, there it is. That's his desktop, so it's going to save it on the desktop, so I don't have to move it there. I may show you another thing to do with this later on. So there it is, right there. So we got our two that we've saved. So I think that gives you. I think it gives you a pretty good idea of the uh, using the screen. The next folder I'm going to get into is called Multiply Folder. And this, this is the idea of this particular folder is to make the image darker instead of lighter. So let's open this first one up. Remember what we did? We hit Control-0. Gives us full screen. Remember that one? Okay. Now, Control-J. That gives us a copy over here into our layers. And then we hit multiply. Boom. Okay. Now, what are we say? So you might like that, or you might say, well, what do we happen if we look into levels and see what happens? Let's open the levels up. Control L. I mean, histogram, I'm sorry. And let's take some midtones out. Maybe that makes it a little bit more gentle. I'm going to hit take off the preview. See, you can. So it doesn't have this harshness. Does that look better? Okay. Okay. So that's where we started. Boom. Pretty simple. But I'm going to save this because I got another little technique to put on this a little later on. So I'm going to save this one too. So first I got to put the layers together. Apple, Shift, E, and then I'm going to go save as, put my little CB there. My wife took this, Nikki took this picture. We were up in um, Delaware Gap. Now I'm going to put it in the desktop, and hit save, and OK. OK, so that should be 
in my desktop. There it is. Now, okay, this is a, this was a fun shot I took. This was down in this. She took this in when we were in the, the Badlands. This is another little area I can show you where we have to fix a picture. This the world's tilted a little bit here. You know, it's not quite straight. So I'm going to show you how to straighten a picture before we start. Now, what I do is I go up on my, my uh, toolbar, hit this little top thing up here. Um, um, it's just, that does nothing, basically. I'll show you later. So you go up here and you pick up a line and you put this line across. Now that line's level. So it gives you kind of a reference point. Then you go to image, and it has, here it says rotate, and here it says arbitrary. And a little thing will come up here. This is clockwise, counterclockwise. This is the angle of turn. And I think maybe, let's try one degree. We'll put one, one that means one degree. And let's hit OK. Then we'll see, yeah, I think it could probably go a little further. Um, yeah, I think it go. Let's take it go a little further. I think it go a little further. So we'll go back, rotate, arbitrary. Since it's all one degree, we'll hit 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 it again. Since this gives us another, so we end up with two degrees. Yeah, so that looks a little better. Now what I'm going to do is hit Command Zero. So that means I've got the full image on my screen. Now the fourth one down your toolbar is your cropping tool. Now, so that look, and so you just basically click on your mouse and pull it across. And there's little boxes here. You can pull that over there, little box here. So you don't want to lose, I'm going to keep it in the grass and I'm going to get as much sky as we can get. So that's about all we can get. Now, you go back over to the cropping box and hit crop. Now, if you want to get rid of that line, you go back up to this very top tool and it'll grab the line and it pulls it out of the way. It won't print, but it's kind of a nuisance to have there. Now, to me, it's a little light because this was early in the morning. It was like 4.30 in the morning we were shooting this. So I'm going to hit Control J, gives me another layer, and I'm going to hit Multiply. Ooh, way dark. Okay, so I'm going to try and see what I can do with my histogram. So it's Command L. Because you have to realize the bottom layer I'm not changing. I'm changing the top one. So I'm going to add some highlights to it. Add some midtones. Okay, now it's still a little dark. So I'm going to go up to my opacity and bring it over. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. That's, you know, powerful gutsy. But I like my sweater. I had a sweater on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the image bigger. And that's, I think I missed the crop here, didn't I? Um, I'm going to make it bigger. My hand. And I'm going to get my eraser. And I'm going to erase the, the multiple layer I made on my sweater. Just to give a little, see that little texture coming up that gives a little more, more detail. Just a little bit there. And behind my ear there, it's a little dark, so I'm going to erase that area. Get that pop right my pop out there. Let's see if I can, underneath my hat, if I can do, I'm going to hit the parentheses smaller. Let's see if I can go under my hat a little bit there. Bring that out a little bit. See, so now I'm actually burning and dodging with the erasing tool, which is kind of interesting. A lot of people tell you not to use the erasing tool. I love the erasing tool. I'm going to hit Apple Zero. Brings me to the full screen again. Now, I messed up my cropping, so I want to do this crop over again. Get up here to the edge. I mean, I missed that little white area there. Okay, hit crop. 
Now again, I've got something else I'm going to do with this later on. So I'm going to save this one. There's a couple of things I might try with this one. So we go up here to File, Save As. I'm going to put my CB here. CB. Put it on the desktop. Two. Okay. Ah. Oh. See what I did there? I forgot to put the layers together. I could save it like this, but I said, nah, let's go ahead and put the layers together. So F, uh, Control, Shift, E. Now I've got one layer. So let's go back and do it again. So I, I do that all the time. We're going to go on to our next section, which I think I call the eraser, which I've already done some erasing, but we're going to show you some more real typical erasing jobs. Okay, I'm going to open the erasing file, and we're going to open uh, Elam up here. We were out in Appalachia Coal River doing a project, and uh, Nikki shot this of Elam, and, and uh, we're out doing the, the Appalachia Coal movie. So, what I, <clears throat> I like here, it's not much. But the background needs to be lighter. His, his clothes look fine. The face needs to be a little lighter. So what I'm going to do, remember the old <clears throat> control or command J. I'm going to make a layer. And I'm going to go to screen. Now, look at that background pop. But what I'm going to do is open up um, Kistogram. Command L, remember that? Okay, I'm going to add some midtones to give a little more feeling, emotions to it. Now, what happened when I did that? Look at his shirt, how light it went. So I'm going to say okay. So what I'm going to do is go get my eraser. The eraser is my my. Uh, I really love the eraser. And I'm going to do is I'm going to my uh, parentheses. I'm going to make my little circle a little bigger. And I'm going to erase his shirt, not his face, because I like the lightness of the face. So I'm going to erase the shirt, his friend here that was helping him. And I'm going to erase the boat, because I think the boat needs to be a little darker, because it's really uh, a little bit too obvious, too punchy. Now, the, one of the, the main difficulties with Photoshop is trying to figure out what you want to do. I mean, maybe the, when you first saw it, it looks okay, but that's where the creativity comes in, is figuring out what you want to do in Photoshop. There you go. Now, let's turn this off. See, there's where it's kind of, you know, real dark, and now, boom, light and airy and feels good, like that. I'm going to save it. So, we're going to go Command-Shift-E, that puts the layers together. Now the next one is kind of a fun one. This is, uh, I think, one that Elam took of me on the Apple. This is this is uh, Dead Lakes. Dead Lakes is an incredible place. You get a chance to go there. Now, what's wrong with this? Well, the background is too dark, and I'm too light. So the first thing I'm going to do is make myself a little darker. So Command J makes another layer. Multiply. Boom. Now, now we got some texture in the clothes, but the background, whoa, is that dark. So we take our little eraser and we erase it. Now my face went also went a little dark, so let's get my face back. Get the camera back. Okay, let's let's see here. We go along the boat. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do here. Is I'm going to click this off, see where we missed. See the little spots I missed, so I can clean those up. Okay. Ooh, my head's gone. Ooh. Okay, so now I'm better. I can feel it's a little better now. So I'm going to compress the two layers, make one layer, and now I'm going to lighten the background. So what I'm going to do is Command J. Instead of multiply, I'm going to hit screen. Boom. 
There comes the background. Look how nice the camera came out. The camera came out really nice. But I'm going to take the eraser and erase the boat. And me. Oh, and my head, I think, is a little bright. So we're going to get rid of that on my head. And let's make sure that I <clears throat> got everything. Oops, I missed a little, missed a little piece there. A little piece here. Oops. Come on, you. Okay. A little piece up here. We'll put it <clears throat> back together again. Now. Let's, let's go back and look at the beginning, just for the fun of it. See how I just kind of switched the two? And that took us, I don't know, a minute, two minutes. Uh, saved a great picture. Uh, this one here, there's not much more I want to do. Now, what I could do, I, layer, I, I lighten the background. I could do it again and see what happens. Just for the fun of me. All you do is hit Command J because it's already in screen and it lightens it again. Well, that's kind of nice too. So you can just keep playing with this until you get it to where you like it. Oh, that's really getting some dimension in it now. And the camera looks really good. It doesn't look that good in reality. So. <laughs> oh, this is a really good kind of a classic. This was, I'm out in the Tetons. Now let's go back, we, we uh, kind of did this once, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go up here and click this little guy on, and we're going to straighten the horizon out a little bit. Well, let's also, let's make this thing full frame. Remember, it's Command-0, I get full frame. I'm going to bring a line down just so I can get an idea on the horizon. Sometimes you can get a little bigger to make sure. Cause that's actually it does it look like it's way off but it's pretty close but let's go and see what happens if we maybe do a half a degree and clockwise let's put 0.5 well maybe 0.4 this is where subjective stuff comes in yeah that's about right so I think that's a little closer now we hit control 0 Full frame, we'll get our cropping tool. Oh, let's go back up here and get rid of this line. Because you have to go, you have for some reason you have to get that little top box to move that line. So we'll go back to our crop line, crop it. One more sky. And we'll hit crop. Okay, now, foreground, the sky is kind of neat. The foreground is really dark. So guess what I'm going to do? Ah, screen. Okay, let's go to Command, J, and we're going to hit screen, and that wipes the sky out. So how do we get that done? Well, we get our eraser and take that part of the manipulation away from the picture. Just erase this guy. Bring it good. Now, you know, those mountains are looking kind of interesting. I don't know if I want to take it all away from the mountains or not. Yeah, I'll take it away from the mountains. Yeah. Now I'm going to go and click off the bottom. This is kind of a thing you should do. Make sure I miss that corner a little bit, miss it a little bit there. How's that? How long did that take? A while back there we went to uh, Apple B and Apple B brings up the color palette. I was thinking that this this grass here and those yellow flowers if I take the highlights and maybe make it a little yellower it might really pop that foreground. I'll take preview off See, it, it made it brighter and yellower. I think it's really got a little more feel to it. The contrast now between the sky and the foreground is really pretty neat. So I'm going to say okay. But I just did the highlights. I didn't want the, the shadows to go dark, to go yellow. I wanted them to stay dark. So now we're going to go Command Shift E, put the layers together. 
This is a this is another Teton shot, which is I think kind of neat too. I mean that's I'm almost like gone. So we're gonna go Control J. I'm gonna hit Screen. Oh, I'm coming back a little bit. So now we'll, guess what we do? We erase the sky. Actually, we're not racing the sky. We erase the layer that we made to lighten the foreground. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna fade into this this uh, bank a little bit. I'll get this a little smaller now, and we'll maneuver around the camera, and we'll maneuver around me. Now I'm going to make this a little bigger. You know, we, we forgot to go to the control zero. But then again, I think I'll make it a little bigger than that too. So I'm going to go control plus. So that makes it a little bigger. I want to get a little more finer tune to get in here by my face. I'm going to make this a little smaller so that I can get in here a little tighter. Some people like the uh, Wacom tablet for this. I am not coordinated enough. I don't know, I just got used to using this mouse and it's all I need to use, I guess. I'm gonna make sure I got that nice. Oops, should I, that's, no, that's the metal part. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and see if I missed anything. Apple, or, or Control Zero. Yep, I missed some stuff. There's some stuff there, stuff there, little thing here, little there. Okay. Now, let's see what happens for the fun of it if we uh, hit that um, Command J again. And um, that's kind of neat. I like that. It's getting to the point now where it's pretty nice. Uh, but I'm going to erase some of it. I just make that came a little light. So every time it's a judgment. I want to get rid of that. I like that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put that together. Command Shift E. It puts all three layers to one. I think that's that, I think it's going to give you a pretty good idea of how to use the eraser. Um, there's there's all kinds of ways of doing it. Let's see. Here's another one. Let's 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 do this one. This is this is a little trickier. The other ones were pretty simple. Now this tree is really kind of dark. Apple or C Control Command O. The tree is pretty dark. So what I'm going to do is make another layer. Control J. I'm gonna go hit screen. Now watch the whoops. Watch the tree trunk. I'm gonna turn it off. Look how the detail came out of the tree trunk. Now you can see the resurrection fern. You can see the bark. But everything else is kind of washed out. Now the eraser. If I I'm gonna use the eraser, but if I use it at 100%. It's going to be a little touchy because there's really a lot of things happening in the sky. So I'm going to go up here and get a percentage. I'm going to go, oh, say 20%. So all I'm going to take off is 20% at a time so I can work this down. Now watch these trees here. See, I, I can, I can, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more there. Oh, let's try a little of this here. That tree is kind of nice because it kind of gets your eye to the background. But over here, you don't want your eye going to this, so maybe make this a little darker, a little erasing. But I'm leaving these trunks because now there's, there's some nice definition in the trunks over here. Go up here to the top, a little erasing there, a little erasing over here. Maybe get that sky a little darker there, a little erasing up here. I think that this could be a little race too. This is a little light in here. Okay. And I think the top of these trees could go a little darker. So 
So you just kind of work it around till you like it. That's got that's a cloud there. So yeah, that's a little bit there. Just kind of have to look back at it. Um, now the base of the tree. I'm going to take this and make it bigger. I'm thinking about maybe. See this? All these are all roots here. I'm going to go 100% and see what happens there. I think that might be kind of interesting. It'll make that uh, whole thing stand out a little bit more. See, I think they kind of put the tree into the ground. If I would have let it light, I think you would have. It would have been distracting. Now, your eye is going to go up into the tree. Um, so let's put that together. Apple Command Shift E. Um, okay, I think that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to go to the next one, which is a gradient tool. Now this one here is what uh, is my favorite ones. Now in the dark room, the black and white dark room, when I want a sky darker, I take and take my hand and I fade it up, so it goes from light to dark. So I get this round feeling. Now the gradient tool is one of those things that creates that in uh, Photoshop. This one here is an example. This one's kind of a dull blue sky. So what I want to do is make it darker here and lighter down here. And that's done with a gradient tool. Now the gradient tool has a couple of things you got to do. Uh, down here, you, this is called the masking part of it. And then this is the gradient part. Now, after you click this on, up right underneath Photoshop, you'll see this little box. Now, I'm not sure what all these things do, except I like this one right here. It's got the little... Uh, checker box and I say OK and the checker box comes up here. Now I'm going to do a linear burn, so make this dark to light. So what I do is I hit this little box here and then I come over here and all three of these little guys need to be checked on. I'm not sure why but it seems to work. I learned all these things by hitting buttons so this seems to look good. So I'm going to pull a line down. Now see the line well, that end of that line is zero. The top is, is the maximum. Now, what I'm going to do to make that line perpendicular to the horizon is hit the shift key. And then I'm going to let go of the mouse, and then it makes it... See that orange thing on the bottom? That's holding the back that bottom back, so it's not going to get an exposure. Now, to define this, I'm not sure why, but you hit Q. See the little dotty things happen? Now, to make this work, I've got to get this over two layers. So how we do that? Same as the other ones. We hit Apple J, and that throws it over here in the layers. And then, what do we do to make it darker? We hit Multiply. Oh, so now, you have a little bit of interest in the sky. It's got more of a curve to it. Um, let's just try it again and see what happens. You wanted to make more dramatic. I think that's maybe a little bit too much. But that's basically the idea of, of taking that sky and, and making some interest to it. Okay, well, I think that's enough. Now, this one here, this was one we did in Acadia with the uh, ocean. Uh, the sky is kind of neat, but I was thinking maybe if we did a gradient burn on it and then here's our, our masking tool a gradient tool. And I'm going to pull a line down. Now it's going to be zero at the bottom, so I maybe want to come down a little past it because it's not going to do much. Then I hit the shift key, Q key, Apple J, multiply. Whoa, storm. Now I think this might be fun is to hit the um, Command B for the color. Now the color is just going to happen in the cloud. It's not going to happen in the foreground because I'm working on a layer that I made. 
So I'm going to take the highlights and give it some yellow. And I'm going to take the shadows. Let's see what, give those a little yellow so it makes the sky a little warmer. And the midtones, I don't know, let's see what happens if we make those a little bluer. And that was kind of weird. So, now I'm going to turn the preview off. So that's where we were before. Now it has a little warmth to the sky, so it's not quite as dramatic. So I said, okay. Now we're going to put it together. Now there's another little uh, thing with this gradient tool. Let's see, we got. Uh, well, let's do this one too. This is the same. It's the same one. Same idea. We're going to do a gradient on the sky. Click on the. Mask. You have to click on the masking tool every time you do it. We're going to bring a line down. Shift. Q. Command J. And we're going to hit multiply. Boom. That's pretty neat. Ah, we got, well, it really was, looked like that. I mean, we really got wet when we shot this. And then again, I think this could use some yellow. So we're going to go Apple... Control Command B. Highlights a little yellow, just a little bit this time. Shadows a little yellow. Okay, that's a weird spot there. Okay, kind of like that. Let's click it off. Now that looks like it's a stormy sky and it's going to get rained on pretty quick there, huh? So I'm going to flatten that. Now, there's something here on the gradients we can use that's a little different. Uh, it's a neat little thing to use. I'm going to use it on my face. I'm going to go Command Plus, make myself a little bigger. A little hand up here, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, now I'm going to hit the masking tool, the gradient tool, but this time I'm going to hit this little circle here. So I want next one over. I want to take a line. This is going to make a circle gradient right here. And then I'm going to hit Q. Just remember last, last time, Apple J. And then I'm going to hit screen. Boom. So i got a face now. Let's make the, now see there, it's a little bit more, see I'm kind of blacking out of there. That came back, oh the beard looks good too, nice Santa Claus beard that way. Okay, I'm going to do the same with this one here. I'm going to do a circle burn. Down here, your masking tool, got the circle already hit here. And I'm going to, my center of interest is going to be these flowers. So I'm going to pull a line from the center of the flowers to the edge here. Q. Oh, I forgot a step. So, you know how to go backwards. Let me show you how to go backwards. You go into history, and you go back and hit open, and you're back where you started. So you didn't lose anything. So I'm going to go back to my masking gradient. Now this one, now if I pull a line out here, it's going to make the center darker. Now I don't want, I want the outside darker. So what I'm going to do is, it says reverse here, I'm going to click reverse off. Now when I pull this line, it's going to make the outside darker and keep the inside the way it is. Q, Control J, I got to go back over here to layer, open layers up. And hit multiply, boom, and look at that. Just makes that, looks like there's a spotlight on those flowers. Now I can play with the levels of that particular one if I wanted to, add a little more highlights to it. Maybe take a little mid-tones, and then say, okay, say I want to have a little bit more brighter flowers, I can go in and get the eraser in case there was any stuff hitting that make this a little brighter 
There you go. Now we'll click it off. Click it on. Now it's the flowers that's the interest. The background becomes less important. This was the Badlands. I wanted to do a gradient on the sky. Go back over here. Now I gotta click this back on. Okay. Do a gradient shift. But after a shift, I left I left my after you hit shift, you left lift your finger off of the mouse and that way it won't change. Q Apple Control J Multiply. Whoa, stormy night. I think this could use more highlights though. So we're gonna use a histogram, control L. And I'm gonna bring the highlights in there. There you go. Now, see kind of, a, uh, now it's really got a stormy night. Is that uh, the, the booksy, stormy night and the booksy all do. Um, now this is another time you could play with colors, see what happens. Let's control B. Let's see if we let's see. We bring the midtones yellow. See what happens. Eh. I don't like what happened there. Highlights yellow. Yeah. You can forget that one. That didn't come out very good. We'll just leave it like it is. And we're going to hit that. I'm going to put it together because I like that. This is a really interesting one. Like my face is very dark here. It's kind of nice, but it's a little dark. So I'm going to use the gradient tool. And then the, actually that's the masking tool, I'm sorry. Gradient tool, circle. I click on the circle. Now, I want my face lighter, so I'm going to leave the reverse on. I'm going to pull a line. Q, Control J, screen, right? Boom, instant face. Now, there's a neat thing you can do here. Let's do it again just for the fun of it and see what happens. Let's, uh, let's go Control, get up a little closer. Actually, it's kind of interesting, except my beard kind of got you know, a little uh, Cloroxed. So what I'm gonna do is get the eraser. I'm gonna trim my beard with that one. Now I've got two of these up here, so I just trimmed one of them. So the, the beard becomes more even. And let's see, maybe there's stuff on the hat. I don't know. No, click on that one. Okay, now I can I can work with levels in here too to change the character or the histogram, I'm sorry, the histogram. And say I want a little bit more black in there. My glasses. See my eyes are coming out a little better. Maybe a little bit of midtones. Okay, now control zero back to full frame. I'm going to go over the history so you can see where we've gone so far. This is open. This is where we are now. I came back. I came back. Now, what I'm going to do is flatten this. I'm going to go back to levels. I'm going to do a burn around me so you even go in more. So I'm going to go back to mask, gradient, circle, but I'm going to turn the Burst off. And I basically want the focus point on my on my face. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start on my beard and go down. Q Command J multiply. Now it's a little dark, so what I'm gonna do is open the histogram, command L. I'm gonna bring some highlights in. I'm going to bring some midtones in. Okay, so let me turn it off. Turn it on. See, it just it, it 
brought your visualization more into me than it did to the background. Now, one thing I can do when I multiply this, maybe the camera is going a little dark. I'm going to see what happens if I can erase the camera there. That might help a little bit. See there? Got a little bit better camera. Did my hand get a little dark? Let's erase that maybe a little bit. Oh, I think that's looking a little better. As you can see, the tripod is underwater. This is uh, in Apalachicola. And the, and the guy we were at, I said, we're going to go in here and I'll just jump off the boat. He says, you're going to jump off the boat in the water? Uh, I've never seen photographers do that before. So anyhow, let's go back to history. Open. Whole different image. Took a few seconds to do. This is a good one. Ah, okay. This now this horizon's messed up, but I'm not going to bother with that because you you know how to do horizons now. Ask gradient linear. Click on the reverse. All the way down. Well, let's let's do it visually, perpendicular to the horizon. Q, Control J, get on the layers here, hit multiply. It's getting kind of interesting. Now, what happened was, I think I probably did a little bit on me, so I'm going to get my eraser. And try to make sure it didn't waste me too much there. Zero. Now, you look at this and say, that's oh, getting interesting. But what if I maybe, see this corner is dark here, maybe what if I darkened this corner? Well, how you do that, I'm going to click on the background because I don't want to work, if I worked on this, I'm only going to work on part of it. I'm going to work on the background. So I'm going to click on the background. I'm going to get my masking, my gradient, my linear. But I'm going to start from this corner and go across this way. So it's going to be a diagonal burn up here. J. And then you hit multiply. Now. I don't like what happened in the clouds and such. So what I'm going to do is get my eraser a little bigger. I'm going to erase the burn on the clouds and me. Okay. Now the sky is getting a little punchy, but I am pretty wimpy. So I'm going to I'm going to put everything together, and I'm going to hit Control J. And hit, guess what? Screen. Oops, there I come. There I am. But the sky disappeared. So, I'm going to bring the sky back with the eraser. That eraser is a powerful tool, huh? Make it a little smaller. Okay, and then there. You, you can take a little more time than I'm doing. I'm going to make it a little bigger now. Got to get inside the camera here. I don't want to have a... Okay. Around the head, around the back. This is really fun. I really enjoy this stuff. Yeah, the camera. Armpit here. Could do this a little slower, but it's you get the idea. Now this 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 brush is on a fuzz, so it kind of blends in. If it was on a sharp, it would see the line more. 
and I'm kind of just blending it right into the arm. Okay. Make I hit minus, it gets a little smaller. There's my circle here. And I think that uh, background could go a little darker. I give them more depth. Okay, let's see now. This maybe let's turn it off so I can see if I missed anything. Yep, I missed a little guy here, guy there, guy here. Okay, let's see up here. Ooh, I missed a big spot up here. Okay. Shift, I mean, com Command, Zero, full screen. That's looking a little pretty good. Now I'm going to put that together. Control, Command, Shift, E. The only thing left, I think, is my face could be a little lighter. So I'm going to go get your masking tool. And get a little circle here. I'm going to make it a little bigger. And... Plus, my little thingy over here. And I'm going to draw a little line here. Q, J, screen. Now, that may be a little bright, but I kind of like the hair, my back hair, and I kind of like the glasses, but the beard's a little heavy. So I'm going to get the eraser, and I'm going to go up and do a percentage. Go, oh, I don't know, somewhere in 19, 20%. Make this a little smaller. And kind of work it down. What I'm doing is just clicking the mouse. Command zero. Now let's turn it off to see what it looks like. See, I mean, I mean, I'm kind of lost, but I came back. I came back. So I kind of like that. So we're going to hit Command, Shift, E, and that puts them together. Now, this is another tool on the uh, gradients that's kind of fun. It's, you know, this has a lot of uses uh, in a lot of different places. This is kind of like phew, flat absolutely flat but what I'm gonna do is hit <clears throat> my mask my gradient but instead of the linear or the circle I'm gonna go over here I don't know what this is called reflected gradients okay and I'm gonna take from the center maybe where this buffalo is here and go up to the top shift Q, Command J, and I'm going to hit screen. Boom! Now I've got the foreground darker, middle ground, so it's, you know your picture's got some dimension to it. And I'm saying, well, well, maybe it would even look better if that background was even darker. So I'm going to get the eraser. And I'm going to go up to 100%, back to 100%. Bring up the circle. And I'm going to take and erase what I did on the background. Because I was making it lighter, so this is going to make it darker. There. So, let's go back to history. This is where we opened. This is where we are now. Kind of a dull picture, kind of maybe a little more interesting picture. Kind of, you know, it's kind of a dull picture, but it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do. Uh, this one here, this is uh, kind of an interesting concept using the same tool, but it's vertical. You can't do it vertically. I want the center portion lighter and the outside darker. So what I'm going to do is go up to image and there's a rotate. I can rotate this clockwise. So I'm going to write it clockwise. 
Now I can use that tool because it's the same linear as this tool here. So I'm going to go to the center of the, of the stream and pull it up. Shift, Q, J. Go back over here to layers. And guess what I hit? Screen. Boom. That was really difficult. Uh, I'm going to go back and turn it back over so we can maybe see it better counterclockwise. Now you just got this nice down the center. Um, okay, now this is another one. This is a kind of interesting project. This one here. Um, control zero, full page. The sky's kind of nice. That's about it. So what I'm going to do is do a gradient. And I'm going to go a linear gradient. And I'm going to go from the bottom all the way to the top. Whoops. I messed up on that one. Do that again. Okay. Now, Q. Control J, screen. So that's getting kind of nice. The foreground's getting there. Now, this is dark on the right hand side, it's dark. So I'm going to click on the background. I'm going to do my masking, gradient, linear, but I'm going to go sideways this time. I'm going to go all the way to these trees here. Okay. Q, J, Green. Boom. Kind of neat. Uh, it's getting there. Let's see if I hit that again. I don't like what happened there. Look at those trees back here popped out. This popped here. Uh, I guess the, the water back here is lighter. Gives a little bit more depth to it. So I'm going to Put this together. Now, her face is dark. So guess what? Back to our gradient. Now we're going to our circle. Do a little hoozy on her face. Q, J, screen, instant face. Background, do me, I'm gonna do my face. And guess what I did? Hit Apple Z, brings me back. I forgot to hit the masking tool. Weird things happen. So, I'll try it again. Now we get the orange, Q, J. Now the question is, did I put on the background? Nope, I did. And I'm there again. Now, history. Let's place this on to Apple's uh, control zero. So we got the whole image. And I'm going to go back to where we opened. And look at that. I mean, it just, I don't know, what did it take a minute, two minutes? The thing about using a gradient, it's so even, you can't usually see where you do it which makes it really exciting. That's, that's what I really like about the gradient. It blends everything together. Oh, this is a really fun. This is uh, my wife, Nikki, and her cousin out in New Mexico. And this is a sculpture the guy does with living things. Uh, you can almost see they're there, almost. So, mask, gradient, circle. I'm going to put it right between the circle there, and I'm going to go all the way up here. Q, J. I got to go back over to my layers. Screen. Oh, there they are. But if I hit it again, they're actually there. Now, what happened was this may be a little distracting here. 
because your eye wants to go to them. What happens if we do it again? Yeah, that looks kind of nice too. So I can get my eraser and I'm going to erase some of this. Go back to the next layer. See, it's bring it back a little darker. I don't want your eye to go over there. I want your eye to go to them. Now, let's see where we started. This is where we open. Pretty much a shot throwaway photograph. Yeah, pretty nice little shot. A minute. Everything blends with that gradient, so you don't see where you did it. Okay. This, let's see. Oh, this is kind of a neat one. Um, this is a friend of mine, Bill Horton, took this picture from a springs up in northern Florida. Was this a huge file, I guess? Um, control zero. Now, this is kind of pretty. Say, oh, you don't need to do anything. But if I go to my masking tool, my gradient tool, and I'm going to go back to that funny one. It's uh, got the, what it does, it makes it lighter here and darker here and lighter here and darker here. It goes both ways like this. So what I'm going to do is pull my little line up, shift, release, Q, J, and go over here to layers and hit screen. Now just open the whole picture up. Now it's bright, happy. Um, now, I think that's enough to show you how the gradient works. It's really one of the uh, really most powerful tools.